This is Vernon Jacob, Senior Pastor of the Embassy Church. I want to thank you for engaging with us through this podcast. May it build your faith and strengthen your walk and cause you to reach the rooftop in Christian living. Don't forget to aim high and never give up. Let's go now straight into this word. In last week's message, I spoke about the flesh. This is a sequel to the flesh crucified. I want you to pay careful attention because it will change the way you walk with God. I want you to be serious about your walk with God. I want you to be led by the Spirit rather than led by the flesh. And if you give God the chance to do that, He'll guide you in wisdom. He'll give you understanding. He'll give you knowledge that for every pivotal decision that you'll have to make in your life, you will stop. And you can make it in the flesh or you can make it in the spirit. And my prayer as your pastor is that you will be guided by the spirit. That you will calm down. The spirit of the Lord will well up on the inside of you and you will be guided. And that's why Paul says, walk not in the flesh, but be led by the spirit. It takes some discipline. It's going to take something. It's going to take an encounter with God for the Spirit of God to increase in you. That's going to be my message this morning. Please don't switch off on me. As a Christian, if you want to grow and go to a higher level, you must learn to be guided by the Spirit of God. And that's what I'm trying to teach this morning. Last week we spoke about the fruit in your life As that increases It overtakes the flesh in your life Is that what we said last week? Uh Let me just use two other scriptures To bring it and then you can take your seats Matthew 7.20 says Therefore by their fruits you shall know them Not everyone that saith unto me Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven But he that doeth The will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy by thy name? And by thy name cast out demons, and by thy name do many mighty works. And then I will profess unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I'm going to cut and paste and find out what is the works of iniquity. I told you the acts of the flesh. Uh, That means how does the flesh act? The acts of the flesh means how does the flesh act? The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, divisiveness, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like, the like means etc. I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this, there it comes, will not inherit the kingdom of God. So says Galatians 5, 19. The congregation may be seated. (laughs) Today I'm going to actually teach you and go in depth. I want to submit to you today that Satan is not the only one that attacks you. Uh, sometimes uh, the pastor was leaving the church and he walked down the corner and, uh, and he saw the devil holding his head. And the pastor conversed with him and had a narrative and asked, why are you holding your head, devil? He says, because of your congregants. He says, what about my congregants? The devil said, they give me a headache. He said, how do they give you an... He says, even the things I don't do, they blame me. (laughs) I submit to you that there are three cadres of attack on any man's life. As long as you're on the earth, you will be attacked by Satan. Number two, another cadre of attack that can come onto your life is you can be attacked by evil men. People will say things about you. Some people will speak about you, they don't even know you. They heard about you. They saw you in, on social media. And they'll, they, because uh, they hate your success and want your success, but can't have it. 
so they'll speak against you. They don't even know you. They've never met you. Some people are watching me online. You never even met me, but you speak about me. <laughs> yeah. You're joking. That's hate you hating. That's envy. That's the acts of, of the flesh. And some people will do that. And you will be, I don't want to use the word stupid because you're not supposed to use that word. But it's true. If you give that domain a space in your life, uh, some of you worry too much about what people think. That's flesh. What people think. If you live by the spirit, you say, uh, it's duck's back. Water off a duck's back. Are we together this morning? Uh, some of you will live more peaceful if you, st if you stop living in the flesh and start just to live in the spirit. Less things will affect you. And I want to tell you something. Be also careful what you put onto a man of God. Uh, some things are not necessary. No, some unnecessary conversations need not reach the ears of, of people. And also in your conversations, uh, there's some things you need not have that. Let's say, let's, let's change the frequency. Let's, let's switch the channel. I don't want to hear about that. Because some things that you hear in the flesh can trouble you. If you receive it in the flesh, it will trouble you in the spirit. Rather shut the gate of it. Are, are we learning this morning? Okay, so Satan is one that affects you. Evil men. The Bible says, and pray that they may be delivered from the evil, from evil men. 2 Thessalonians 3, 2. I'll come back to that just now. And number three, you can be troubled in, in your life by your flesh. The flesh can irritate you. The flesh can do things that can, can, cause, you, can cause you to come under attack. So the solutions, Satan, you can cast him out. You can bind him. You can resist him. Somebody say resist. How do you deal with satanic attack? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Jesus did that when he was ascending the mountain, when he, uh, when he was in the fast. Uh, and each time he said, Satan, it is written, thou shall worship the Lord thy God. So he was resisting. There's res Somebody say resistance. When it comes to the enemy, you resist the enemy. When it comes to men, evil men, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of, or standeth in the way of sinners. So evil men, what must you do for them? For them? Run from them. Young people, listen to me. Associations, there is power in association. Who you associate with. Some one preacher said, show me your friends and I'll tell you your future. Associations with wicked men will bring wickedness into your life. Run from them. And the, the third cater of attack will be in your flesh. The way that you, you deal with the flesh is you don't resist it. You don't run from it. You crucify the flesh. You say no to it. You take nails if you have to and nail your flesh and say you sit here. Don't go there. You crucify the flesh. Are we together this morning? Now, there's a way that when, when, when you, were, you didn't know Jesus and you didn't know Christ, uh, there's a way of the world that was in you. But when you come to Christ, you have to, you have to nail down the ways of the world. The songwriter said, the things I used to do, I do them no more. That's why when you got baptized, they sang the song, Glad day when I was born again. Glad day when I was born again. Glad day when I was born again. It was a glad day when I was born again. There must be a born again experience. That means I died to the world and I live for Christ. That's why Paul says, for me to live is Christ. And for me to die is gain. Because it, you, you start to live in the spirit realm. I don't want to sound too preachy or churchy, but that's the truth. Now listen to me. 
The nature of Christ comes into you. Galatians 5, 22 to 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now this is what I want to say. And they that are in Christ... Uh, okay, somebody who got a tax rebate should just buy me a pointer. All right. They said, and they that are crucified, are, are we together? And they that are crucified, now don't, five of you don't buy me, just decide who's going to buy that thing because if I say avocado paste, the whole tree <laughs> comes to my house. Just take it easy. Calm down. Bring it in, in. I love avocados. Is it not avocado season? Yes. Dylan, where's the avocados? It's on the tree. In the car. Hallelujah. <laughs> and they, yeah, help me. And they that are, and they that are of Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with passions and lusts therefore. That means you came to Jesus Christ. Come here, son. Help me. He's, he's, the, he's the one that came to Christ. So, with my body on the cross, when they crucified, part of the nails went through him into me. So, you were crucified with Christ, with all of your passions, with all of your lust, with all of your idolatry, with everything. That means that when you came to Christ, the things I used to do, I don't do them no more. <laughs> So if we live by the Spirit, by the Spirit let us walk. Let us become, let us not become vainglorious, provoking one another, envying one another. I'm going to come to that just now. But here's the thing that I want to speak about here. When you came to Jesus and you gave your life, you were quickened. The word there is, uh, and you at, at he quickened. When you have an encounter with God, when, uh, that's when you become quickened in the spirit. You, you, you start to have a bubble in the center. You know, like a, like a builder's level. You know what a builder's level is? Uh, in the center of that level, you have a bubble. And when you're crooked, the bubble goes down. When you're straightened, the bubble comes to the center and you know that you are straight when the bubble is in the center. I pause this morning for this cause to ask you, is the bubble falling down or is the bubble in the center in your life? Uh, just check it. Put the level and check where are you. Is it a devil or a level? Are we together this morning? So you are quickened. There is a, a, a commentary that says, Romans 7.24, Richard man that I am, who shall deliver me out of this body of this death? Who shall deliver me? It means in, in Roman discipline, uh, one of the capital punishments for a man who has done sin, they'll take a dead body and tie it to his body. And uh, the, the, the death from that body will go into this living body and contaminate him. And he'll get sick because death or the, 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 the bacteria from this one body, is from the dead body, is going into the living body. And Paul says, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me out of the body of this death? And that's how he's feeling. He's feeling that there's a live spirit inside of me, but there's a dead flesh containing me. Which leads me to talk to you a little bit about the content and the container. There's a holiness about the content. But there's a contamination of the container. And there's a, there's a, there's a leaking of the contaminated container into the purity of the spirit. Paul says, the things that I want to do. I find myself not doing it. And the things that I do not want to do, that means the container sometimes is overpowering the content. It 
going to be, you have to be intentional when you're making a decision to say, let's look at this thing. I can make this decision in the flesh or I can make this decision in the spirit. And I'm talking about you must be led by the spirit of God. We're talking about that. Is there anybody that agrees with me? Say amen. amen. Now, there's a footnote and I want to teach, I want to do Bible study. And I'm not sure if you can handle this, but let's, let's see. For this you must sit up. Deliverance from sin. God, through, you can use the, and help me. God through Jesus Christ delivers us from sin in three phases. The scripture that I want to use is 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 uh, to 10, the bottom there. He hath delivered us. Somebody say hath delivered us. He hath delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us again. He has delivered us. He will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Are we together this morning? Sit up. Let's learn. This is Bible studies. Number one, he hath delivered us. He is delivering us. And he will deliver us. Uh, those of you battling with the flesh, I'm talking to you this morning that you need to put your, put your hope in the spirit of God. Uh, that he has delivered us. That he is delivering us. And that he will deliver us. Uh, Christ in me. The hope of glory. Anybody got Christ in them this morning? If you got Christ in you, you got his spirit in you. He hath delivered you. He is delivering you and he will deliver you. Let me camp there this morning. For those of you that have Christ and you said yes to him. My soul says yes. If you said yes to him, then he has delivered you. When you come into trouble, he will deliver you. And when you leave this mortal and put on immortality, it speaks about when you go into the presence of God's glory, in his presence there can be no, he will deliver you. Uh -huh. So, I delivered you from the penalty of sin as we became Christians. Number two, he is delivering you from the power of sin daily. Those of you that are going through any temptation, the Bible says, look for the way of escape. He always makes a way of escape. Are we together this morning? When you're hard in temptation, look, there is a route. There is. There can never be no route. There can never be no door. There is a door out of that temptation. You must look. It's there. It's there. And from the presence of sin in heaven, when our bodies are transformed to mortality, you will find God there. He is consistent. There's no, actually there's no sin that can enter into the presence of God. That's a good footnote. Anybody got something from that? Say amen. amen. All right. Now let's understand your body makeup. I'm teaching. You are body soul and spirit i just spoke about it just now uh, anybody got dstv at home and you got a decoder yes son thank you uh, it's one one side that's why children they like so innocent the decoder i'll just talk to you son the decoder receives the signal so it comes but to go to the tv it has to be converted and the tv gives you the picture the picture is just the final analysis it's it's more the the, the flesh but the spirit is transmitted the soul decodes it and talks to the flesh the flesh does not talk directly to the spirit and the, the spirit cannot talk directly to the flesh. It has to go through what we call, Nevelyn, your soul. My soul says yes. It's the soul that has your emotions. It's the soul that has your feelings. And sometimes when the spirit comes, it's so strong, if it just reaches your flesh, it will blow your flesh. 
So your spirit, your, your soul needs to decode it and, and, and talk nicely. Sometimes when my children, not now in those days, when my children wanted something from me and they couldn't, they knew they would not get through to me. They went to my soul mate. That's why you have a soul mate. Uh, anybody in that category right now, when the children can't talk to you, they go talk to you. And sometimes when the wife can't talk to you, then they use the children. Tell your father the food is ready. <laughs> Anybody living in that space like uh, For 20 years now, you're talking through your children. Anybody in the, uh, Ask your father if he's hungry. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing because... Yes. There's a, there's a soul that, that decodes. There's a soul that desensitizes. And you must be careful that your, your soul doesn't become more fleshly on the flesh side, it should really be on the spirit side. Keep your soul going. Okay. So, this treasure is in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So, there's a treasure inside of you. That's the spirit man inside of you. It's a treasure inside of earthen vessels. When the temptation comes, let's talk about this. The temptation of the flesh. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Jehovah God had made. And the serpent came and said to the woman, Yea, at God said, you shall not eat of any tree of the garden. Uh, this is an attack by Satan. On the flesh. He's using a door of the flesh of Eve. And so this is according to the cadres of attack. One is bad but two. So Satan is attacking the flesh. There's a two pronged attack. Satan is using the flesh. And he's, he's talking to this woman and he's tempting her in the flesh. With, with, with eating. With eating. I want to pause for this course here and say, in Genesis chapter number 3, I, I want you to know the sequence that when God made Adam and Eve, they were, they were dancing and enjoying the garden. I would say for many years. It's not like in chapter 2, Adam and Eve were made, and then in chapter 3, the serpent just came. There is a, a pause, and they were living. They were enjoying life. They were enjoying the garden. Um, daily, God will come and meet with Adam, and they'll have conversations. Uh, it, it, it was... Uh, uh, just for, for statistics, or just to make you understand, it could be 100 years that the voice of Satan was not in the garden. Eve was enjoying herself. They were eating of the, of the trees, but they didn't touch the tree of good and evil. And then Satan came. I want to tell you today, make this point, the flesh reveals itself in levels according to your growth. As you rise, your flesh as a way of emerging to invent strategies to challenge and attack you at the level of your growth. If you are not King David, Bathsheba will not be your flesh problem. Let me say that again. If you didn't rise and elevate to a level of kingship to be at that level, the enemy will leave you alone. But for each level, there is a devil to attack you in the arena of your flesh. I'm saying this because uh, if you are not uh, Samson as a warrior, Delilah will not be your problem. But as you rise as a warrior, the enemy will, will send devices, he'll send warlocks, he'll send witches, uh, 
with the strategy of a Delilah in your life. Are we together? If you're not Abraham, who is promised to be the father of many nations, you will have no temptation to create an Ishmael. So some of you don't have a Delilah problem. Because it's not inside of you. You have not risen to that level of warrior. But dare you say, I'm going to be spiritual. And I'm going to be an intercessor. And I'm going to be a warrior. You will see a Delilah will emerge in your life. Some of you are too broke right now to go through king's problems. But when you rise and become a king, when you become wealthy and you start to attract treasures, uh, broke devils don't attack rich people. Are we together this morning? So I'm trying to say that be careful. Some of you say, well, I don't have a Bathsheba problem. I don't have a Delilah problem. I don't have a, 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 a Ishmael problem. Lest you become too proud in where you are. Be careful because as you rise, as we ascend, this is the year of ascent. As the church rises, there'll be new attacks at a level where we've already overcome, but at a devil that you've never seen. Give God some praise this morning if, if you understand what I'm talking about. If you are not Christ the savior of the world the devil will not meet you in the pinnacle points of mountain tops and offer you the whole world because that's not that's not your level that's not your temptation level are we together this morning can I go to the next slide are you learning good why did God give Adam this choice and this, this type of fleshly challenge? I write to tell you this morning that restrictions create frictions in our lives. If there was only one woman in this world and there's no choice, I have to marry Eve. There's no, no friction. And there can be no mistrust when I leave home and I come back. And when she like says, do you love me? I'm not going to say yes. I'm going to say who else? <laughs> Are we together? But restrictions, when he says, restrictions create friction. When there's a choice. That's where the problem comes in. Your flesh will be okay if there was no choice. I'm going to talk about choice just now. But I want to tell you this morning that choice is only proven when you have a conflict of options. So, because uh, God says he, he wants to make sure that he choose, you choose him and uh, him alone that you're going to express your faith in him. So, so as a Christian, there has to be this deliberation. Are you going to take the whole world and give me Jesus? Or are you going to forsake the whole world and you take Jesus? That's where the conflict comes in. I told you in 2011 that you can't have one world in the, in the world, one foot in the world and one foot in the church. That time is over. You can't have a Bavira and Sampira in Latin. Bavira, Sampira. Monday, Sunday. Tuesday, Sunday. Bavira, Sampira. You're going to come, you have to come out of from the world and be separate, saith the Lord. Oh, you're getting quiet on me now. You don't like that gospel? The friction is where faith is fertilized, where maturity is developed and discipline is exercised. When you choose Jesus, you're going to have to say no. You have to say no to some things. You're going to have to walk away from some things. You've got to be like the gambler. you got to know when to win, know when to walk away. 
know when to run You never count your money When you're sitting at the table There'll be time enough to count them Got some gamblers in the house, yeah? <laughs> For your faith to become legitimate You will at some stage in your life Deal with a conflict of choice Between flesh and spirit let me say it one more time. For your faith to become legitimate, you will at some stage in your life deal with the conflict of choice. Christians, listen to me. Everybody in this church, listen to me. There will be one stage, one day in your life where you will get an opportunity to make a choice between flesh and spirit. What will you choose? How will you behave? And this word needs to resonate in you and tell you that there is a spirit inside of you. There is a content inside of you that God has poured. It's called a hidden treasure. It's poured. You have it. Every one of you have it. When the opportunity presents itself, will you allow the hidden treasure to bubble up and become that bubble in the center? Or will you remain crooked like that level? The Bible says, let every crooked thing be made straight. Every high thing come down. Every low thing come up. Let every crooked thing be made straight. You say, I'm prophesying right now. I'm speaking to you this morning. Some of you are inside of crookedness. In Hindi, they say, Chorwan. Some of you are inside of crookedness and God is watching you from a distance that are you going to level up, level up and let this, the bubble come back to the center like a builder's level. Are we together this morning? I'm not sure who I'm talking to. I'm not sure who I'm prophesying to. But let everything that is high come down. Everything that is low come up and every crooked thing be made straight. Sister Heather, I'm trying to tell you this morning and everybody in the back there that there is a difference between a God thing and a good thing. And sometimes good things may sound, look good. I told you two weeks ago, uh, there is a way that seemeth right to man, but the end thereof is death. Watch when you enter something that you have done a forensic investigation in the way that it goes. It may seem right. It may seem good. But is it God? And that's where your spirit comes in. That's why when we come into worship, we say, pray, strike the ground, ask God. And God will pour it into your spirit. The compass and the green light of the spirit is peace. Let me say again, the compass and the green light of God, of the Spirit of God is peace. When you are wrestling with something and you don't have peace, wait. Wait. I learned this just two weeks ago and I wish I had learned it before. Dr. Carl Hendrix spoke about it and he was talking about the F1 formula. And he says when the F1 drivers are, are following each other. You just don't overtake whilst you're following and you may have a gap. He says, watch, they, they watch to know whether there's stale air coming out of that exhaust. And in the moment of stale air, you never overtake because that, that stale air can swing you out. You know those birds that fly and they go, ha, 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 ha. And, and, and they fly in, in, in what, in, in, in a formation? And the, the ones on the, on the front, they have headwinds. The headwind is pushing towards them and the strong birds uh, break that wind. And all the others are flying in slipstream. They are flying in the easiness of the birds ahead. And every now and then when that bird gets tired, it probably says, ah. <laughs> and, and those others say, ah. -ha. It means I'm ready. You fall back, I'll go forward, and then they all come. You'll see them, and they go into slipstream. Coming back to F1, you never overtake in stale air. The wind will 
throw you off course. So you wait until you come into slipstream when you can overtake and the wind is just right and shoo. I like that sound. Shoo. <laughs> and then you can overtake when you're in slipstream. What are you trying to tell us, Pastor? There is the flesh of it and there is a spirit of it. When you're entering into an argument, when you're engaging into something, I wish somebody told me this earlier, but don't enter in in stale air. Wait for the moment when the slipstream is ready. Postpone the engagement. Postpone the meeting. Uh, tell them I'm not ready to meet you right now. There is a time, the Bible says, for in Ecclesiastes, in all things there is a timing and, and in his time he makes all things beautiful Ecclesiastes 3 in his time he makes all there is a thing that you can say it's the right thing you can say but you say it in the wrong time it's wrong and you can say the wrong thing in the right time and God will make it Right, because of timing. Somebody say timing. Timing. Uh, and some people, even when you walk into church, and we must die to flesh. We must die to flesh. Flesh wants recognition. Oh, they didn't give me due recognition. They didn't mention my name. They mentioned her name. But I was going to the same city. Didn't mention my name. Die to flesh. Let God be God in your life and say, you, you know, if you don't die to that arena of flesh, it will trouble you for weeks. Oh, they embarrass me. So what? It's only you. Jesus went to the cross. They spat on him. They plucked his beard. They, they striped him. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The, trans, the, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. It tells me, Sister Judy, of a man that's living life in the spirit. Oh, it's my reputation at stake. So what? I learned a long time ago. You give it to man today and God will give it to you tomorrow. Let them take it today. But what you lost to men today, God will make it up in the future. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. I'm coming to an end. I want to just tell you something about the flesh. It's naughty. Your flesh has a way of lying dormant until an opportunity rises to feed it. All of you got something in it, inside of the flesh, that's lying dormant. Some temptations will never come to you whilst you broke. But the moment you come into wealth, all wealth related temptations will emerge. And God knows sometimes how much you can handle and some of you are praying for much. Uh, those millions, it's due to you. It'll come to you when you have maturity to handle it. Yes. When you have built capacity to handle it. Oh, let me tell you this morning that money can amplify sin. Yes. It, it, can, it can amplify the way you do. You can sin in style. Yes. Money can help you pick up a prostitute in Hollywood. Can cause you to leave Mahatma Gandhi Road. Oh, yeah. And cause you to buy a ticket into a place called Vegas. And fly somebody from 600 kilometers away from Hollywood 
into Vegas and money can buy you what nothing else can buy you and it can even put a, a, a caption on it. What happens? Oh, you've been there. I was testing. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Money can do that to you. And I tell you what, God sometimes knows the hidden things in the dimension of your flesh. And he restrains. He puts a restrainer and says, not now. It will be sent to him, but not now. And there you are praying and saying, why can't I have it? At that age of 33, he knows the fire inside of your flesh is greater than the fire inside of your soul. So he's waiting for you to come to 50 when the passion dies down. Your cholesterol level goes low. The testosterone level inside of you is submerged. And then he says, bless him with 10 million. Hallelujah. Yes, you all know what I'm talking about. For every age, there is a stage of blessing. As there is a devil for every level of your flesh. And the enemy knows that there is something inside of you. And the moment you come into something, the devil unlocks, lifts the gates to warlocks, witches, demons. And says, he's ready for that attack. And that's why I'm trying to tell you that you're going to have to watch your flesh levels. That at that same level, the level of the spirit. Spirit must activate to say stay down flesh I've paid too much of a price to get this level of the blessing I've prayed too long for 20 years to come to stand on this altar and at this level of the altar the enemy is going to bring new things to your pastor and there are no's that you have to say now that you didn't have to say 20 years ago are we together this morning? You're going to have to deal with things. You're going to have to deal with frictions, conflicts uh, in a way by the spirit. Uh, somebody say, tell them off, pastor. He say, calm down. Calm down. And then I go on my knees and I start to pray. And the prayer moves from ordinary to Nigerian. Uh -huh. And you start to. To, to pull down wicked forces. Uh, I try to pull down evil dominions. Uh, we've learned now. I didn't know about this. Uh, Lord, I stand with the rod of the priesthood. Uh, and I pull down every demonic strategy in the name of Jesus. Uh, no weapon leveled against me is going to prosper. If you grew with me, you know my prayer was far less. Uh, 10, 15 years ago. But as you grow, you have to grow in a thing called stature. You grow in stature. Are we together this morning? So there is a certain level of flesh that's dormant, waiting for the right condition to emerge. Let me say this. If you write it, write it down. It's my own. It's called a flesh trap. I call it a flesh trap. And for, a, for you to know the flesh traps in your life, you must investigate the ancient gates in your life. Investigate the ancient gates of your life. What do you mean, pastor? Well, Abraham came to a place called Gerar in Genesis 20. And he knew that the men are going to make a move on his wife. And they'll kill him for his wife. So they said to, he said to, to his wife, hand him. He said, we will lie about your status and say that you are my sister and not my wife. Six chapters thereafter, in Genesis 26, Abraham has a son called Isaac. And Isaac is moving with his wife, Rebekah. And they come to the same spot, same king, Abimelech. Same place, Jerah. And he looks at Rebecca and he says, mm, You are too beautiful. These men here have never seen such beauty. Some areas don't have as beautiful women as other areas. If you travel to the east, you'll know what I'm talking about. 
He says, you are too fair-skinned and these, and, and these guys, they're going to take one look at you and they are going to desire you and they're going to want you. So say that you are my sister. Strange. In the same place, six chapters earlier, his father had the same problem. I tell you what, if you want to know what's dormant in your flesh, just look at your father. And look at your family lineage. Some of you... Uh, when your grandmother was younger, she fell pregnant without getting married. And the granny had to keep the baby. And then when, uh, when, when you had your daughter, your daughter fell pregnant without getting married. And now what you've dumped on your granny, your child is dumping on their granny. And grannies are becoming mothers instead of grandmothers. If that's the pattern in your lineage, there's an ancient gate of premarital sex and having children out of wedlock. It's a pattern. This morning, I tell you to do a forensic investigation in your family lineage. And if it's not for you, tell your children this thing of alcohol. My grandfather was an alcoholic. My father was an alcoholic. It may have skipped me, but it may come into your gate. I shut the gate this morning. I shut the gates. I shut the gates. I shut the gates. In the realm of the, of the flesh. That's just physical flesh. What about your, your, your health flesh? When you go to see a doctor, the doctor says, did your father have diabetes? Did your father have a stroke? Did your mother have cancer? What is he doing? They're doing a forensic investigation in your health to see the patterns of a gate. Oh, lift up ye heads, oh ye ancient gates, so that the king of glory will come in. And to change it, you're going to have to pick up the gate and shut down every spirit that is there. Are we together this morning? Everybody stand. Watch the flesh traps in your life. And I'm going to close with this. There is something inside of you that's dormant right now. I tell you that it is in the spirit realm time activated. It's waiting for a certain time. Some of you it's, it's not yet revealed. But the day you get married... That time, that lock breaks, that gate opens, the day, it is time activated. Some of you, it lies dormant when you have a child. The day you birth that child, something enters into your spirit. It's time activated. Uh, in, 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 in foreign languages, in, in the, they call it Jani. Uh, you know, in the Indian language, they say you, you must be careful in the seven days that you get journey, you go off your head. But that is spiritual patterns activated. A gate lifts on a certain date. Because I tell you what, the enemy is not interested in you. He's interested transgenerationally. He's more interested in the next generation and the generation thereafter. That's why his attack on Abraham because uh, God promised Abraham, he said, you will be the father of many nations. He saw it in Abraham's spirit to be a container so that he can contain the womb to have many children. Therefore, the devil is transgenerational. He's, if he can't get you, he'll get your children. He got more time than you. you. You got zero to 70. He's got the whole period. He'll wait for you. He'll sit and he'll wait for your child. Until your child comes to that certain level. And he'll attack. He'll have strategies of, of attack on your children. That's why when I say strike the ground, you've learned today. That there is a flesh that can be activated. You must strike the ground. You must shut the gates. Are we together this morning? Matthew 6.13 There's a prayer that Jesus said. For those things that are dormant. Lead us not into temptation. He said pray daily. So this today you'll say. But deliver me. But deliver me. From evil. So every day when you rise, you pray. Because some temptations will never come to you. 
Because what it feeds on is not found in you today. But as you rise and become king, Bathsheba becomes your problem tomorrow. As you rise like Samson and become warrior tomorrow, Delilah becomes your problem. As you rise and the promises that God gave you as Abraham was to, he was, they were barren. You're going to have to pray. Deliver me from the temptation of even my wife telling me, go take Agar and have a child with her and create an Ishmael. The, the spirit should have rose in Abraham and said, no, this is not God's will for us. But you can be a movement in the spirit. But voices, please be careful about who speaks to you. Sarah said, take Agar. It wasn't a godly thing. I didn't hear Abraham say no. He said, well, if you say so. Ah. Quickly, some things the flesh says yes to very quickly. That's why. Take it easy, Neville, and say no to, to, to demonic. And you know, I had to in the flesh. Can I give you a, a little testimony? You, you ready? Maybe it'll help some of you. There was a season in my life when the flesh was really gratified with the game of golf. We, we started off playing on Fridays. We had a pastor group that was going on Fridays. And we were enjoying it. The more, as some of these guys, the more you play, the more better you get. And we were getting good. There were days we were playing in Wild Coast. Leave early, 4 o'clock in the morning, playing Wild Coast, 18 hole. On the way, you stop in Penning, it's Pennington. You, you play another 18 holes. If you've got time and it's a sun, you stop in maybe Toti and do a 9 hole. We were crazy. And through the voice of my wife too, she said, and it was becoming putting pressure on the, on the family. Because on Saturday you want to prepare. But the argument is you can, you've got time to play golf all day. But when you, you, you can understand the narrative, you can feel the spirit. All right. So, so you can't even win an argument when you want to stay, when you want to stay and do what you have to do. Because you already, yeah, you know, did what you have to do. But, but the Spirit of God was saying to me that golf is now becoming God. Because we were starting to play Mondays and Fridays. Then it was Monday, Wednesday and Fridays. And I'll tell you what, I like how you said, hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the, hmm. That's the, exactly what a, hmm. God said to me, in the flesh, because that's the acts of the flesh, idolatry. He said, this thing is now becoming, a, it started off as a game. It starts, yes, why I'm telling you, some things in the flesh starts off innocently. And it quickly swings and can become idolatry. And quickly, you need to arrest it in the spirit. Am I talking to somebody? So, this prayer that you pray and deliver us from evil, God must speak to you about the things in your life and deliver you. I'm speaking to the whole church this morning. There are some golf in your life that needs to die. There is something in the flesh this morning. God brought you to this place. Something that you are doing that needs to die so that your marriage can be better. So that your relationship can do better. Your business can thrive again. There is something in the flesh that you must give up today. Me, it was golf. And I tell you what, it was great. For a season, cobwebs were on. I only recently picked up my, my golf bag. But there was a lot of cobwebs and, and all of it. When I picked it up, the devil says, buy this. There's a new uh, driver. New driver. It's 13,000 rands. 
And the devil is saying, you deserve it. You are blessed. <laughs> I had to say, devil, away with you. I can do something better with the 13,000 lands. Oh, are we together this morning? And there are some things in the flesh that is eating away your blessing. But you feel so blessed because the flesh makes you feel that way. You deserve it. That, that dress. Uh, you know the lady was doing shopping and the, the devil came and said from the front, man, you deserve that dress. You look so beautiful. She said, get thee behind me, Satan. He went in the back of her and he said, you look better even from the back. <laughs> in the flesh, he becomes your mirror, not only from the front, but from the back. He'll tell you all kinds of things. There's a voice to the flesh that speaks louder than the voice of the spirit. This morning, may God turn it around. And may you be led by the voice of the Spirit and know that this is the Spirit. How do you know it's a Spirit? It will give you peace. The greatest compass of the Holy Spirit is that when you make a decision in the Spirit and you have peace. If you're still wrestling, then don't do it. There's no peace. Wait. Wait on me. Wait on God.